Hello, everyone. Uh, if you have a free seat next to you on your left or your side, off your left or your right, please squeeze into the middle of the room because we often have a situation that people are entering the room when the presentation starts and they don't have any seat to have a seat. So. Before we start, I would like to encourage you to ask questions during the presentation or after the presentation. We have uh, cool scarves for you as a reward for your questions. Uh, then I would like to ask you to evaluate sessions uh, using the web application for schedule or the mobile application. Also, please write blogs or tweets uh, using the hashtags DevConfCZ or DefineFuture. And also feel free to use the Telegram group for asking any event-related questions. Also, please don't forget about the Sunday contest. That's the last uh, last thing on, on the program. And uh, you can win really cool uh, stuff there like Arduino boards or Raspberry Pi. So please still st uh, stay till the end. So, so j just before we start, I would like to ask you again to squeeze into the middle. If you have free seat next to you, please squeeze into the middle of the room so we have room for people entering the room after the presentation starts. And now I would like to introduce EG Benz, uh, who will give you a presentation about new features in OpenV Switch. So the floor is yours. Yep. Hi. Since the mic is working. Uh, so. Open with switch. Uh, okay, so let's start with a question. No, no scar for this question. Sorry. Uh, who knows what open with switch is? <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I was a bit afraid that people here would just come and try to learn something about open with switch, and then I will start with something really hard and difficult. So uh, this doesn't doesn't work. Ah, it does. Uh, so new features, let's just first uh, try to uh, uh, make sure that we know what we mean by new features. So the current version of OpenV switch is 2.4, was released in August, it's like uh, half a year ago. Uh, and actually this version came uh, after one year gap, so the previous version 2.3 was a year before that. Uh, and obviously during that time a lot of development happened and a lot of new features appeared. Uh, so this talk will be mostly about 2.4 but also about 2.5 which is going to be released soon, hopefully even this month, maybe in March, uh, if everything goes well. And actually I will be talking about few features that will go even beyond that. It, to six or maybe even later, depending on uh, how fast the developers are. Uh, I will be mostly uh, the most of the tro most. Okay, as you probably know, uh, OpenV Switch has uh, several data paths. Data paths can be kernel data path or user space data path. I will try to cover both, but focus a bit more on the kernel data path. So just uh, for reference, the kernel kernel version is 4.4, released just a few weeks ago. The upcoming is uh, 4.5, and I will cover also these kernels uh, during this talk. Uh, 
DPDK, I don't remember the, what's the current DPDK version. It's not so much important now. So from the higher level view, the new features can be, can be divided into like four or well, five groups. Uh, first, improvement uh, in the open flow because uh, the open flow standard specifies quite a lot of things and not all of those are uh, implemented in open vSwitch so new things are being implemented uh, well, constantly and the the committee that is uh, responsible for the open flow standards is just adding things even more quickly so there's always something to add uh, next Quite a big topic is tunneling. There was a uh, well, lot of new stuff uh, with tunneling uh, that happened uh, in uh, the past year. Uh, the third topic is connection checking. That's actually quite important stuff. We will talk, we will talk more about that. And a uh, related topic is network address translation. And the last point I want to cover, although just briefly, is open, really new shiny stuff. So let's start with the open flow. Uh, <coughs> one of the nice stuff, one of the nice things that uh, is new in OpenOE Switch 2.4 is bundling. Now we can do, we can add, delete, and modify flows using one command. And if we specify the bundle option, it creates uh, open flow bundle, which means that all of those uh, flow modifications have to happen atomic atomically and together. So if any one of those would uh, to fail, all of those are not committed and not executed. Also, uh, if this is uh, done, then the changes appear, atom appear atomically at once to all packets, to all operations uh, on the flow tables and so on. So no more situations like when you are deleting flows and adding flows and packets keep coming in between and you are in a bit awkward situation that packets can match flow that you didn't intend to. So this solves that. Uh, to make this easier to use, uh, the add flow and add flows syntax was uh, uh, enhanced. Now you can actually specify a keyword uh, in front of the flow rule uh, to, but, uh, to specify whether you are deleting flow or modification, mod modifying flow or uh, adding a new flow. So yeah, since now new flows, or sorry, since now uh, all flows are deleted by add flow comment. But yeah, of course the uh, del flow and other, other things, that, that still works. Uh, there are many more features or many more new stuff with open flow. Uh, I don't want to cover everything. Most do such as small things that are usable in particular uh, scenarios. So just one more and it's conjunctive match, which allows a uh, kind of matrix match, like kind of uh, match this packet only if the uh, source address is in this particular list of IP address and destination address is in this another set of IP address at the same time. Right, uh, up to now, this actually required to have uh, like n times m flows set up, which is quite inefficient. So if you matched uh, four source addresses and four destination addresses, you would have to have 16 flows installed, which sucks. So uh, conjunctive match solve this, solves this. Uh, its usage is a bit weird, but then what with open flow is not weird? So, uh, uh, the uh, can it actually points? I don't know. I think it does. Yeah. Uh, so what you do is uh, uh, establish a rule with conjunction ID that if matched would do something. Like in this case, it uh, outputs the packet to uh, to the first uh, report, and then you set up rules with a special conjunction uh, action. Uh, 
which first uh, argument is the ID and second actually specifies uh, which part of the of this set uh, this matches. So this would mean that uh, and and the the actual action or the the conjunction it will only match if all of those uh, parts are satisfied. So yeah. Let's move to channeling. That's more interesting. So there were a uh, few infrastructure uh, enhancements, like generic, generic enhancements. Uh, the one that's quite a new or quite, quite interesting, although invisible to most users, is conversion to lightweight tunnels inside kernel. So up to now, uh, when you created, f say, a VXLAN interface in uh, OBS, it was some kind of weird internal interface. If you ran ifconfig or our IPA, you didn't see that tunnel interface. It was internal to, OB, uh, to OBS. Uh, the not so nice thing about this was that there was quite a lot of code duplication in the kernel because the VXLAN uh, kernel interface and VXLAN code in uh, the kernel module, uh, OBS, sorry, uh, VXLAN uh, code in OpenVSwitch kernel module, uh, was really most many of code was uh, was duplicated and that, that caused problems with implementing new features and so on. So this was finally unified. Now when you create VXLAN interface in OBS, you see an actual kernel VXLAN interface, and the same for other tunnels. It's still backwards compatible. You don't have to worry about that. Open with which is used exactly the same way as before. So this went to kernel 4.3 and will be probably backported to various distribution kernels. We also got support for user space channeling uh, over VXLAN, GNV, and GRE. That's in Open with which 2.4. Uh, its usage is quite non intuitive. The setup of the uh, DPDK tunneling is a bit hard, but can be done and works. So I spoke about GNIV, or uh, GNIV. I think the correct pronunciation is GNIV. It stands for Generic uh, okay, Networking something, something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't write it down, so I didn't remember. Uh, so GNV protocol is, uh, is a protocol that's kind of specific to, to OBS currently. Uh, it's not much used uh, outside of OBS. It's actually designed by the OBS authors. Uh, and it's uh, really similar to VXLAN, but it can carry metadata. So you can add quite a lot of metadata to headers, uh, which is really useful for some use cases, and we get to that. Uh, Later, so support for GNV tunneling was added uh, to OVS 2.4, but only the upcoming 2.5 release adds support for actually matching uh, on uh, the uh, on the uh, metadata and setting it, and uh, it's done using TLV type uh, length value, uh, and it's really generic. So uh, you, using the new command uh, at TLV map, you can add actual or specify actual TLV uh, attributes and then later set them using the set field, set field action yeah, that sets this value or adds this value to the GNV header using this uh, TLV, so this class, this type of this LAN and similar for other. So this, this uh, rule actually adds two uh, TLVs to generate the metadata area, and the constructed encapsulated packet is sent to vPort2. Uh, on ingress, we can match on metadata. Again, as usual, uh, this is mask, and this is the value, so it can be masked, making this more useful. Another thing, another new thing, is tunneling over IPv6. Up to now, uh, OVS did not support turning over IPv6 at all, so this is new stuff. Again, will be in upcoming 2.4. You also need the kernel 4.4 for 
for that. So that means that this the current kernel, the newest released one. Uh, currently, uh, tunneling over IPv6 is supported for VXLAN and GNV. And its usage is really similar to, to tunneling over IPv4. It was actually one of the design goals. So uh, let's say that we create a VXLAN uh, port uh, and we specify that we will supply the source and destination address later using the actual uh, open flow rules. So this will be the OBS command to create the port. This is the same, no change here. It's exactly the same as with IPv4. And then we can uh, create uh, open flow rules that will actually do the tunneling. And again, it's really similar to IPv4, except we have this IPv6 keyword or IPv6 string. So if we want to set uh, the source address for tunneling, we store that to tun IPv6 uh, source uh, variable or whatever. The same for destination. So it's really simple. Again, on ingress, we can match on these things as well. So we match on IPv6 source address and can do the right thing, direct the packet as appropriate. Uh, or the second, uh, the second option, again, the same as with IPv4. This is even simple, actually. Uh, you, you may not specify the destination, ad uh, source ad destination address using open flow rules. You can just uh, make it fixed by creating the interface. So you just specify IPv6 address. You're done. Nothing more. So this is really simple. Uh, there's also, or there will also be support for IPv6 tunneling uh, using user space data path, for example, the PDK. Uh, this is going to be in either 2.5 or 2.6 OVS release. It's not clear yet. I don't know whether Tadeo has new info. No. <laughs> uh, 2.6 probably is more likely. Uh, well, Tunneling stuff. Uh, I probably have to mention MPLS. It's not so new. It's exactly it, it went to kernel 3.19, but that was actually after the last uh, DevConf. So uh, yeah, so it was it's kind of a new feature in the last year. Anyway, uh, speaking about kernel data path only because uh, that was supported even before for for user space data path. And the example of usage is here. So there is push MPLS action, uh, which push the MPLS header uh, in front of uh, the, the packet, specify the ether type, and then you can set fields, uh, set the MPLS label and other stuff. And on ingress, match that, pop the MPLS uh, header, and so on. So yeah, again, nothing, nothing complex here. But uh, there's a lot of new stuff happening. That's not yet merged. That's just currently worked on. One of these things is NSH. NSH is kind of weird stuff. It's kind of similar to GNIF in some kind or in some way. It's kind of similar to MPLS in other way. Uh, so the intention of NSH uh, is to actually carry metadata between various uh, switches over wire actually, or even inside host in various format. And the way this is done is uh, more, quite often, uh, this is encapsulated in stuff like VXLAN GPE or GRE and, or other stuff, in L3 mode, which means that the tunnel does no, or inside the tunnel, inside the, the, the packet, in the inner headers, there's no Ethernet header, so you take just IP packet without the Ethernet header and encapsulate that uh, inside VXLAN GPE or GRE or, or whatever. Uh, and then uh, possibly adding NSH header between VXLAN GPE and the actual payload. This means that now we're, deal we're dealing with L3 tunnels, no Ethernet header, or L2 headers, but uh, 
OBS is strictly Ethernet based, so it expects that uh, every packet has Ethernet uh, header uh, in front of it. And it's really hardwired, hard coded in various places in OBS. So this is a limitation that obviously ha uh, has to be lifted. Uh, Actually, there are patches available for that. So they have some issues, so they are going to be recent, and uh, yeah, uh, so they are not yet merged. So it's likely they will go to OVS 2.6, or maybe even later. It really depends on how well this goes. When this is done, uh, it will be possible to really direct uh, uh, or to add uh, more, inter more inter interfaces of more kinds to uh, OVS Bridge. Like right now, you can add tap interface to OVS Bridge. With these patches, you will be able to also add tune into a tune interface to OVS Bridge or VXN GP and stuff like that. So there will be new push, uh, most likely. Nothing is really uh, certain at this point. As I said, these patches are not yet merged. So there are likely to be two new actions push. ETH header and pop ETH header action, which will add uh, the uh, or remove the Ethernet header. Uh, the 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 first version of the patches actually pushed empty Ethernet header, meaning the uh, source and destination MAC address was all all nulls or zeros, and then uh, you would use a set field action to actually populate these fields. Uh, also to ease switching between L3 and L2 uh, ports uh, added to the, to the single bridge, it's likely there will be some kind of implicit push and pop actions if you don't specify otherwise, which will take care of this transparently. So NSH, I already talked about, talk about that. There are s people really want that. Honestly, I don't really understand why, but people really do want that. <laughs> so uh, this is something that will be added well, almost, most internally. Uh, VXLAN GP, there are uh, patches that add VXLAN GP to the kernel already, not yet merged, currently in the process of being reviewed and, and being merged. So the target is probably kernel 4.6, maybe later. Again, you never know when you're submitting upstream. Uh, and uh, the, the, the earliest open switch version this can go in is 2.6 because we need L3 support for this actually. Uh, the XLAN GP can uh, operate in two modes, L2 or L3. Really, uh, this is something that uh, needs to be uh, chosen before or while creating the interface. So either the Ethernet header is excited or not. Uh, this was done, or this actually used a lightweight tunnel infrastructure in kernel, would not be able, we would not be able to implement it otherwise, so uh, the effort of the conversion really pays off now. So this is the, this is how this will probably look like, but maybe, again, it'll be maybe different. So this is the syntax. You see the only differ difference is that you specify a, a different type. And NSH uh, will likely be implemented as new, two new actions, push NSH and pop NSH, which will again push and pop NSH uh, header. More actions will be needed to actually support uh, setting the payload of NSH and matching on it. This is not yet clear uh, how this will look like. There are no patches that do that yet. Again, something to be implemented. It's quite likely that first we will there will be some limited support of NSH and will be extended in some later version of OBS. This will be combined with those push ETH and pop ETH actions to support all those sort of combinations of NSH and Ethernet headers. So yeah, that's enough for tunneling. I think we had enough tunneling. So connection tracking, that's the most cool features that can be to OVS 2. or will come with OVS 2.5. You will need kernel 4.3 at least for that, uh, for this to work. And this really adds connection checking to OVS, meaning you can do stateful firewalling in OVS finally. 
Uh, this is really important for things like OpenStack uh, or OpenShift and Docker and stuff because now they will be able to do stateful firewalling inside their integration bridge, and they won't don't want do, do, they won't have to resort to various tricks as now like creating f f bridges with Linux bridges with two interfaces and using EB tables to do uh, to do connection checking. So this new uh, code allows matching on connection state using open flow rules, so you can match whether the particular connection or particular packet uh, belongs to a connection that is established already or is new, or belongs to another, uh, another uh, connection, it's so-called related. Uh, for this to work, uh, OBS has to defragment or ref, yeah, defragment and ref, uh, defragment packets uh, on ingress and refragment them again where uh, they go out. This is transparent. You don't have to uh, care about that. This just happened. So the uh, the theory of the operation is that the packet can be in two states. It can be either untracked or tracked. Initially, every packet packet is untracked. Uh, and it, became, uh, it becomes tracked when uh, you execute CT action, contract, CT for contract, or connection checking action on that packet. Uh, it actually, the, the CT action uh, takes uh, several parameters. One of that is stable, uh, which caused the packet to be actually forked and to continue to the table is specified and also continue executing rules in the same table. Uh, and at that new table, the packet becomes tracked. So from that point on, you can match on those contract uh, fields. So untracked, uh, untracked uh, packet does not have the contract fields populated, so you don't know whether it's established or new or whatever. Uh, so one packet is uh, tracked, there are Two more states that are interesting, and it's un it can be uncommitted and committed. Uh, when it's un when it's committed, uh, basically the state becomes new to contract, and uh, basically save the state. You can set certain fields, and also you commit that uh, um, connection that uh, further packets in the same connection became established. I will show the example. Uh, there are different zones, yeah, because uh, quite often you need to do defragmentation and connection checking different for different uh, like VMs or different tenants. So you, this, you cannot do that in the same space. You cannot really mix traffic from different tenants. They, have, they can have the same IP address, so you could mix up their fragments. This is something that cannot happen. So you can specify actual zone. Zone is a number. Uh, and that's kind of namespace for, for connection tracking. So that's independent for different zones. You can also set mark or label. That's a custom number that you can store with the connection and later retrieve and match out that. So it's like metadata stored in the connection, connection table. So this is an example. Uh, stateful firewall, which allows new connections from port one to port two but only established connection the other way. So you cannot initiate connection for, from port two. So let's look at this. It's quite complex, actually. So we have table zero. We have uh, rules, uh, three rules. They have different priorities. The highest priority rule is this one. Uh, matches on IP packets. We, yeah, it's quite obvious. And this is important. So when the packet is not tracked, it's unchecked. Then we execute this action. We uh, execute the, cont uh, the contract action and redirect the packet to table one. We're operating in zone two, but that's not so important. In table one, the packet is tracked now. Yeah, so this, again, we have two rules. And we have two rules. One matches on new packets and one uh, matches on packets that belong to an already established connection. So whenever it's new, we commit the packet and output it uh, uh, to port two, and if it's established, we just send it out. Uh, yep. Should that be output two, or is that a new syntax? 
Should that say output colon two? It can. It's just shorter syntax. It's the same. Is that new? See? Is that new? And I don't think so. <laughs> I, I wanted this to be shorter, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and the, on the other on the uh, other other way, actually, I think this is not complete. So do you would you would actually have to have this more more complex if you really want would like to for this to work. So this is really just just a part of the configuration of all of the rules. Uh, but. Uh, Yep, so if, if we got the uh, packet from the other direction, from port 2 to port 1, again, table 0, yeah, we match this rule again, go to table 1, but now in port is 2, yeah, we go in the other way, and here, if the, if the state is new, we drop the packet. If it's established, we send it out to port 1. So, yeah, that's a simple state for firewall. Uh, it doesn't deal with things like ICMP and stuff like that. I said it's not really uh, complete, but yeah. Net. Network address translation. Uh, this is another thing that's, uh, that will really help uh, OpenStack and Docker, OpenShift, and all, all those guys. Uh, because it will allow to do a network, network address translation inside OBS, again, using OpenFlow rules. It's implemented, uh, it will be in uh, OBS uh, 2.6, so something like, I don't know, four months ahead or like that. Uh, and in kernel 4.6, so we will, have, we, will have, we will have to wait even for the kernel uh, with this support oh, a bit. Uh, this is implemented in, actually inside the contract action. So there is a new sub-action sub of, uh, uh, of the CT action, which do the net. So this is highly tied to contract. Uh, it's actually highly configurable. You can do, uh, you can do uh, SNET, DNET, you can specify IP address ranges, port ranges, and do other cool stuff. So this is example of uh, of SNET. The the syntax is not yet final. It may change, so don't take this syntax for granted. So again, we have uh, we have this action contract. We 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 do we do commit. I have commit twice here. Why? Okay, so it is definitely not the final syntax. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, just one commit is enough. That's actually it's, it's a typo. So we commit and we execute this subaction, specifying that we want the source address to be replaced by an address from this range. Yeah, so there probably will be different rules so how to to select the, the 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 particular address from the range, or it can be random, whatever whatever you need. Uh, yeah, so. That's basically it. On the, from the other side, yeah, from, the, from the port 2, we need to reverse the net, so uh, uh, translate the address back to the internal address according to net table, and that's done just by specifying net subaction without any, any parameters. So uh, the way this is done actually is using contract zones. So if you have multiple tenants and you want to net each other to different addresses, you use different zone in the in the CT action. Yeah, so that's that's it. It's not real namespaces, like kernel namespaces, but this is what you, what you really want. That's contract zones. <laughs> There's no routing. This is switching. This this switch. So you specify flows. You insert net action somewhere in the flows, and that's it. You don't do any routing. That's just switching. 
If you configure, so yeah, so the question is uh, whether it be, uh, happens before routing. So it really depends on how you configure it. If you configure the OpenV switch uh, in the way that you have an internal uh, internal port that goes somewhere and it's routed, yeah, of course it happens before it goes out that port. It's really up to you. It's open flow. You can specify, you can program it, whatever, however you like. An example of DNet, of course. Uh, it's really similar. There's nothing, nothing mm, interesting there. You match uh, on the particle uh, IP address and translate it to, to another one. And on the way back, you just specify net and that's it. Happens magically. <laughs> Only Florian understands that. And maybe Hannes. <laughs> uh, One of the, one of the, uh, so, okay, so, so the net, net will be really uh, interesting thing in, uh, in uh, 2.6. Uh, with the upcoming 2.5, there, there's another really new thing that's called OVEN, uh, Open Virtual Network, and that's, uh, resides in, in inside OVS project, but it's uh, kind of high level or uh, higher than OVS. It's an interface between uh, so-called uh, so uh, cloud management systems like OpenStack and uh, OpenV switch. And it does, uh, it, it takes the logical, uh, logical view of the network as those uh, cloud management systems have, yeah, like OpenStack view of the network, of the logical network, and translates this to actual open flow rules on actual uh, nodes. Yeah, so basically this is some kind of uh, generic uh, code that will do the translation from the, uh, from the virtual networks to the low level open flow rules and, and, and con flow configuration. So that makes will make uh, life easier, I guess, for a lot of projects. And the theory of operation is that uh, there is a cloud management system plugin that uh, uh, actually communicates with so-called so, so uh, northbound database, and uh, through uh, north north daemon, this communicates with soundbound database, which communicates with OVS control, OVS, oven oven controls on uh, individual nodes. Yeah, and during this chain, the rules are translated back and forth. Uh, so everything is nice and happy. I don't really have time to go through that in details. Uh, interesting thing about this, or thing worth note, is that uh, through each packet that travels the logical network uh, has metadata appended to the whole, uh, th through the, throughout its whole life, and its whole uh, traversal of the network. Uh, so that means that to use all the features that, that are needed, we need a protocol, a tonic protocol that can carry those metadata between hosts. So this is why Oven is based on GNIF. You can use VXLAN too, but you lose some features and there are some not so trivial, uh, not so trivial uh, things that, uh, or limitations like you can have only one endpoint for each VXLAN and, and so on. So let's not go into details. There's a bunch of other features that I won't cover. You can read them, like DPDK vhost support in uh, OBS uh, 2.4 that speeds, uh, actually speeds up uh, handing of the packets uh, from OBS to VMs. You no longer have to go through kernel. You can directly to, to Q, 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 QEMU. Since 2.5, even with multi-queue for vhostnet, uh, there is more QoS support, more Q, Linux kernel QDisk supported, and you can set up. Uh, there's uh, Mac, uh, Mac flooding mitigation implemented, multicast snooping, uh, MLD, bash command line completion, which is very nice, finally, 2.4, and so on. So, I'm almost out of time. We have like two minutes for questions, I, I think. Yeah. In the filter, there's this concept of uh, related connections. How does it translate to open 
Uh, Can you repeat yeah. the question, please? So the the question was that uh, NetFilter uh, uh, has the concept of related connections, uh, and how this how can this be expressed uh, in uh, in contract in OBS? So it's quite easy. Uh, you see those flags here uh, to track new established. So there's flag called uh, R L uh, R E L. So we just use that, and that's it. Good question. <laughs> Sorry. Another question? Yeah. yeah. For uh, IPv6 tunnel endpoints, it appeared here that uh, kernel 4.4 is required. Is is that the case? Uh, yep. So it's kernel 4.4. It it has support. That's for for kernel data path, obviously. Yes. Uh, for user space data part, obviously you don't you don't care about the kernel support, but it will be in kernel two uh, in in OBS two point six only probably, probably maybe it will make two point five, but it's not likely. Do you want this? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, slightly tangentially, but do you know what happened to contract D? Is this still around? Is it dead? Do people care about it? Or because it was a great thing once upon a time. <laughs> contract D. Uh, I have no idea. That's probably a question more to NetFilter developers. <laughs> you want to answer? So I don't really understand the question. So contract D is basically uh, for two things. So one is for replication to multiple firewalls for redundancy. And the other one is to do experimental protocol helpers in user space. But I don't think anyone ever uses that except the developers. Um, so it's just about replication. And it should just work, actually. Because as far as I've seen the patches, and I didn't see anything that would interfere with contract D and the way it works. So, I'm actually not sure whether something like that could be implementing using OBS controller. Maybe <coughs> not sure. Probably not. 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 Not now. We would have. We would need to have some kind of notifications about new connections, which I don't think is there yet. I mean, there's probably no no protocol to to pass this information from OBS to 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 OpenFlow control right now. Not sure. Okay, so thank you, Iji, for your presentation.